always excited to get an adventure box. Probably gonna get something cool in it. So in this case, it's a drone that's just coming out today, right now, available, but you haven't seen it before. So let's talk about it, stay tuned. What do we have here? Let's get that in focus here. That's what you think it is. For dramatic effect. What's going on everybody? I'm Ryan Shaver from the Adventure Team and I've got something that a lot of you have probably been waiting for for quite some time or at least since the M30 series came out from DJI. The Mavic 3 Enterprise and Mavic 3 Thermal are finally here. We got to talk about it. So the M3 series, which brings much of what the Mavic 3 has into a true commercial offering, is essentially here to succeed the Phantom 4 RTK or the P4R as it's often called. I've got the M3E here, but I'm also going to break down the thermal in this video because some of our pilots did test that out and they were kind enough to send some content over. All right, some of you might be wondering, what is an M3E? Well, it's a portable all-in-one platform made especially for surveying, and it's the newest offering from DJI. It's got a four over three inch CMOS 20 megapixel wide angle camera and a half inch CMOS 12 megapixel telephoto camera. It stays in the sky for about 45 minutes of flight time max. We all know how that goes. It's got a 0.7 second shooting interval and coverage of around six square miles per single day of work. Now the M3E is as efficient as it is sleek. It's also highly accurate. As I'll discuss later in the video, it's also compatible with the DJI RTK module and a speaker system. As for the M3T, you get a half inch CMOS wide angle camera, a half inch CMOS telephoto camera, which we'll talk a lot about here in the later parts of the video, and an uncooled VOX microbolometer thermal camera that shoots in 640 by 512 at 30 frames per second. Now, both of these drones stay in the sky for about 40 to 45 minutes with a hover time of about 39 minutes per battery. It takes about 70 minutes of charge time to go from zero to 100% and about 50 minutes to go from zero to 90%. Let's talk about what you get in the standard package. So you get one aircraft, you get the battery here, you get an SD card, a gimbal cover, which is nice plastic, sort of like the M2, three pairs of propellers, which I did not get in my package. So I'm wondering which of my teammates stole my propellers. You also get the RC Pro Enterprise controller, 100 watt charger, an AC adapter, USB-C cable, and dual USB-C cable. You can also add optional items, as I mentioned, the RTK or a speaker system, along with a charging hub, extra batteries, and a 4G dongle. And right here is where you're going to be able to add the RTK module and speaker system. So pretty cool. And that's one of the differences between the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3. So I have a Mavic 3 right here, Mavic 3 Cine. It's my go-to. Tell you what, it's, it's not much different, all things considered. So you do have the hub up top, which you don't have on the Mavic 3. And you also have a Hasselblad camera on the Mavic 3, which you do not have on the Mavic 3 Enterprise. And I'll talk about that a little bit too. It's actually one of the better features, believe it or not. So what makes these two drones different? Probably the most important difference between the two is the M3 has both an electronic and mechanical shutter. Now, if you're a P4 user, you already love hearing that because if you're mapping, surveying, or just doing photogrammetry, it's a huge feature. You're gonna get sharper images and you're going to get more data because you get a better quality of data within each image. The key here is you need to switch the mechanical shutter on because it's not on out of the box. So you might get a little disappointed if you do not remember to do that. So mechanical shutter, gotta turn it on. Of course, the regular Mavic 3 only has the digital shutter, which is fine for your standard aerial photography and cinematography, but on an enterprise level, that mechanical shutter is a game changer. Now, additionally, the M3E runs on Pilot 2, supports multiple routes planning, has a minimum shooting interval, as I mentioned, of 0.7 seconds, and it has interval parameter calibration for each unit. You're going to be able to add a host of accessories like the RTK, a speaker system, I've mentioned these a couple of times, along with the DJI payload SDK. Now, I mentioned that the M3E is the new answer for P4R users, but what makes it better than the P4R, aside from being brand new, sleek, and sexy. 
Well, for starters, it weighs about two pounds, which is a pound less than the P4R, and it's foldable as I've shown you before. Very nice, compact. So it's much easier for traveling. You can throw this right in the backpack. You don't have to lug around the huge case unless you prefer to. It also might surprise you that it has better wind resistance at almost 27 miles per hour resistance compared to 22 miles per hour for the P4. Now, from my own experience, P4 always beat the Mavic pretty handily when it came to flying in the wind. So I'm really curious to know how DJI made that possible. I can ask the question all day, but I don't care because now I know that it is possible it's not going to be crushed by the wind like its predecessors. All right, so we've established that it has better battery life and shorter shooting intervals. So the M3E is about eight times more efficient than P4R during survey missions. It's also extremely accurate. It's got five centimeter ground sampling distance. The ortho photo efficiency of M3E can reach just under one square mile, which is about 1.9 times that of the P4R. And with one centimeter ground sampling distance, it can reach up to nearly two tenths of a mile, which is about 7.8 times that of a P4R. Needless to say, if you're conducting aerial surveys, doing mapping, you're going to be incredibly impressed with this UAS. All right, so you're also going to use the DJI RC Pro Enterprise controller with the M3E. You'll get the 4K transmission, an HDMI port, right here, and that fantastic O3 Enterprise transmission, which is a huge upgrade from OcuSync. And it runs on the Pilot 2 app, as I've mentioned. Of course, with P4R, you had the standard STK RC, so you didn't get all of those features. If you haven't used the DJI RC Pro yet, which is used for the Mavic 3, one of the most important things to know about the controller is that its overall performance is incredible and it's even better on the Enterprise Edition. It's just really smooth and stable compared to its predecessors. So now that I've talked about the M3E a bit, let's shift gears to the M3T, which is more comparable to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. The big difference between these two resides in the camera. Now, both drones give you wide angle and thermal capabilities, but as some of you might know, DJI has put a ton of effort into the zoom lenses in recent years. That means that the M3T comes equipped with a half inch CMOS telephoto lens, as I'd mentioned, and that gets you all the way to a 56 times hybrid zoom. Now the M2EA only went to a 32X digital. As for the thermal lens, you still get that 640 by 512 at 30 hertz thermography goodness, which provides outstanding quality, as a lot of you might already know if you're using one. Now in terms of weight, the M3T is slightly bigger, uh, not, a, not a whole lot bigger, it's actually comparable. It comes in at about 11 grams heavier, but it's also slightly faster, and as I'd mentioned, has better wind resistance. Now take all of that and add on that it has about 12 extra minutes of battery life. However, there is one major drawback that you should probably know about, and that's the lack of internal storage. The M2EA comes with 24 gigabytes internal, while the M3T does not support internal storage. So you'd better pack a few extra SD cards. In my case, I'm used to the extra terabyte on the Mavic 3 Cine, so not having that could be a little confusing. Always have SD cards available if you're picking one of these up. All right, let's talk safety, and I'm going to start with superior obstacle avoidance. So the M3E series has an omnidirectional binocular vision system supplemented with an infrared sensor at the bottom of the aircraft. Yeah. And it supports both DJI support beacon and, yeah, I'm gonna say it again, the RTK module. Now that's a ton of comparison talk, so I hope you're all still with me. You're probably just excited to see how this thing flies. And that's what we're gonna get to. All right, let's talk about some of Advexure's first impressions. We've had several pilots out there flying these, and there's a lot to talk about. First thing, it's very quiet. It seems to be because there's a difference in the propellers between the M3 and the M3 Enterprise. So I'm gonna pull them up here. Now, as you can see here, the tips are a bit wider here on the M3E and they lift out a bit more. And that's actually gonna make a substantial difference with flight noise. They'll look in here for my extra propellers. They've seemingly disappeared. So with those propellers, if you're doing tactical missions or any other mission where you have to be a little more quiet, then you're really gonna see a huge advantage with this drone. It's not like the M30 or the M300 where you're gonna fly around and make a ton of noise. Now also I talked about the zoom specs. I promised I'd come back to this. 
I didn't say enough yet, that zoom is fantastic. Our pilots, who are not overly excitable, actually used words like incredible and amazing to describe the zoom. So you gotta check this out. Look how crisp, clean, stays on subject. And that's at 56X right there. So extremely far away, still nice and clear. All right, I mentioned this a few times. DJI said that this drone can handle wind very well, and we can confirm that. The link and the range are also improved, while the controller runs the Pilot 2 app extremely well. Like, really well. Now another feature that we really liked about the RC controller is how it provided real-time telemetry from the craft, such as the wind speed, and it was very precise about how much battery you had left. Overall, the RC is just so much smoother and so much more easy to operate than the previous versions of these controllers. And it does so well with the touchscreen capability, just makes everything easier. All right, DJI did a fantastic job creating an all-in-one portable enterprise drone for most use cases. I'm gonna unfold it here again. But here's the problem. This is not weatherproof. And I know that's a question that a lot of you have been having this entire video and we're covering it now. Not a weatherproof drone. So if you do need weatherproof, you gotta go with the M30 series. This is not going to stay in the sky very well if it's raining or snowing. So who are these drones for? The M3E is most certainly for remote pilots who do surveying, mapping, modeling, and inspection work. It supports TimeSync 2.0 and has centimeter level accuracy with the RTK module. Also, as mentioned, with a mechanical shutter, you're not going to get that jelly effect <laughs> under high speed movement. The M3 camera is calibrated with internal parameters when it leaves the factory, and they do that in order to ensure the accuracy of modeling. And these internal parameters are going to be written in the CMP information of each image. As for mapping accuracy, M3E has GCP-free accuracy that is one to 1.5 times of ground sampling distance. So what does that mean? If your GSD is three centimeters, the accuracy will be anywhere from three to 4.5 centimeters. Now who is the M3T for? Well, it's going to be the perfect all-in-one solution for remote pilots who need thermal imaging and portability. Now I imagine that first responders are going to see the most benefit from public security and emergency response to finding hotspots on roofs, search and rescue, and inspection work, both thermal and visual. If you're a photographer or cinematographer, stick with the Mavic 3 or the Mavic 3 Cine, unless you're moving into the mapping and surveying space or you're planning to become a first responder. This drone was not built for your typical pilot, it was built for enterprise level missions. Okay, is the M3E right for you? That's the question, right? So you've got the M30 series and it's a total powerhouse. Though the M30 is portable, it's not nearly as portable or lightweight as the M3E series. However, if you need a weatherproof drone, as Ed mentioned, you need to stick with the M30. If you're already sold and ready to get yourself an M3E or an M3T, I dropped the links down in the description so you can buy either drone and their accessories. Or heck, you can buy both drones, all the drones. That's what I would want to do. If you're still not sure, just go ahead and connect with us over at adventure.com via our chat box. We work with scores of organizations each day, helping them to not only find the right UAS, but also to implement a program that's right for their specific needs and will help you plan missions and train you if necessary. We also have a loaner leasing program where you can try before you buy. Now it's not for everybody, but make sure to ask when you do connect with one of our UAS experts to see if you qualify. It's tough to make an investment when you're not quite sure that it's gonna work out for you, and that's exactly why we're here. All right, you drone studs and studettes, that's all for the M3E series. I think it's time to go fly this thing, so I'll catch you next time. Ryan Schaefer, out.